We interrupt your regularly scheduled brainwashing in order to bring you news. Breaking news. A special segment of the almost daily Zencast. Focused on curious, quirky, and quixotic news items that you may have missed during the last 48 hour news cycle. Hosted by me, the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. Hello, and welcome back. I am your host, the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo, bringing to you some news breaking news. Completely unauthorized recording of a newscaster discussing the Trump wall government shutdown. Now, let's tune in to what S.E. Coop from CNN has got to say. And yes, I know, dear listeners, the mainstream media is not to be trusted, blah, blah, blah. I know all about those conspiracy theories, and yet here we are. Because I think sometimes, despite the corruption, the real news gets on the news. Here's something I think is worth our time to zoom in on. Hopefully you'll be able to hear her as I play it back live, or not live, uh, directly from my DVR on my cable system. Here we are. S.E. Coop. I don't know what the S.E. stands for. Uh, S.E. Coop on CNN with a segment called The Red File. In the Red File tonight, it may seem like the government shut down and fighting in Washington is over a wall, but as is almost always the case when it comes to immigration, what we're fighting about is a distraction. Hold on right there. And I quote S.E. Coop, what we're fighting about is a distraction. A distraction from what? Oh, S.E. Coop, delightfully intellectual uh, and also simultaneously very sexy newscaster, which is not a chauvinist thing to say. There are sexy people all over the place. She's one of those where she's like wicked smart and also kind of easy on the eyes. So hopefully, now the reason I point that out is because I think that people kind of need that. We need intelligent, beautiful people telling us what we're supposed to be worried about, or else we kind of just ignore it. But I digress. Let's pay attention to this intelligent, well-informed, and yes, totally mainstream media analyst, and what she's actually got to say about the distraction and what we're being distracted from. Please note that she's not talking about Trump and his failings. She's not criticizing Obama because he's uh, Obama and a Democrat. You see, what she's lancing right through is the us versus them rhetoric, which keeps people misguidedly blinded to the fact that the argument is perpetuated by both sides and nothing gets solved. This isn't an accidental outcome of our contentious multi-party system. This is how the system is designed. I don't think that's by default. I think it's by design. Call me cynical, but I think there's a reason the system remains broken, and that's because both sides find that politically profitable. There's a reason The system remains broken, and that's because both political parties find that profitable. Republicans can run on the drowning of America, Democrats' amnesty, and scaring old white guys to the polls, and Democrats can fundraise on sanctuary cities and Republican xenophobia. Does anyone think Trump would be president today if illegal immigration had been solved? The prop has been punted by presidents and lawmakers on both sides of the aisle for decades. 
our entire lives. Arguably, if you really open up your political perspective and look really hard at history, the immigration system has been broken since the first wave of illegal immigrants that we lovingly call the Founding Fathers illegally entered the territories that the Native Americans lived on and usurped them. But I digress. Her point is incredibly important today. Her point is the point I've been making for years, and that's that both parties profit from the conflict they create. So is this latest fight yet again just for show? Of course it is, S.E. Coop or Cup. Is it Coop or Cup? I don't know. I think it's Coop. Of course it is. This fight over this gloriously absurd, impossible, and utterly useless wall that would deter nothing, that would basically be a huge waste of money, and at best, under best case scenarios, could be lauded as a job creator for a period of time, this fight is a distractionary fight. No one's really giving two shits if they build a wall or not. At least no one up there in the upper echelon of either party. No one cares if more people start flooding in illegally. Why? Because we need them for the cheap labor. The simplest and most undeniable evidence that Trump does not give two shits about illegal immigration is the simple fact that not only does he have illegal immigrants under his employment at his properties, but he has, since he became president, shielded them from his own ICE agents so they would not get deported. Why would the president, who hates illegal immigrants, then hide illegal immigrants like Anne Frank from the Nazis, <laughs> Hide them from his own ICE agents so they cannot be deported. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe he's a big fat liar. Maybe he doesn't give two shits about immigration, legal or otherwise. Maybe he's just out to fearmonger and cause the exasperated expression of xenophobia, which most Americans have been coddled into thinking is no longer a problem, right? We're past racism in this country. We've been patting ourselves on the back about it for at least 20 years now. But I digress. Let's listen to how S.E. Coop wraps up her little uh, diatribe, and let's see how much deeper we can go with it. Again, Kevin Mack and Brina Cardona. Kevin, most Americans want stronger borders, but um, not through the wall. Trump promised to overturn the 14th Amendment was never legally going to happen. Uh, two-thirds of immigrants do not prioritize a pathway to citizenship. They want legal status. So all the stuff we fight about are not the things that actually matter. Um, do you see what I'm getting at here? Yeah, let's, let's talk. Now, she invites her uh, panel to join in the discussion, and that's great, and they have a great discussion. Um, I'm going to stop there because I think we've uh, heard the, the most significant bit um, from her initial statement. Both parties profit from a broken immigration system by design. In other words, it's not an accident, folks. They are doing this on purpose. They are doing this, why? On purpose. Why do our politicians that we vote for, that are supposed to be, quote, fighting for our rights, why do they create a situation where a very divisive, very controversial uh, legislative agenda is forever and perpetually broken and will not move forward towards a solution? Why, oh why, would anyone do that? because they profit from the conflict. 
Now, in a country where competition and making money and being rich are at the core of our ideological conditioning, it can be a little difficult at first to understand why profiteering on conflict might be bad. We might also go, well, this is just a problem with immigration and, and pretend that it only applies to the immigration situation. No, 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 my dear friends. I humbly suggest to you that the immigration situation, this endlessly uh, kicked down the road can of a broken system that pisses people off on both sides, this is not just one bizarre, crazy, messed up, broken political clusterfuck. No, 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 my friends. This is the blueprint for the entire methodology by which they keep us oppressed. This is how they manage to keep us distracted from the actual acts of tyranny that they deploy against us and have been doing so since World War I. Okay? They keep the population of this country divided, angry with itself, arguing with each other vis-a-vis -vis these various broken ideological conflicts, these impossible to solve uh, imaginary and very destructive lines of division. And this immigration thing, it's just one of many. To think that that's uh, isolated and all kind of uh, self-contained and really just about the evil brown people that are coming up from the border, southern border, that's, that's the very naivete, or rather, that's the, that's the blindness of the conditioning imposes on people, right? Let's, let's limit the whole issue to as flat and two-dimensional set of talking points as possible, because that way, people will find it easy to rage against the enemy. But who's the enemy in this situation? The enemy isn't the immigrants coming in, right? That's not really the enemy. The enemy is your fellow American who disagrees with you. If you're anti-illegal immigration, then the enemy is everybody else in the country that you've been brainwashed into believing wants open borders. No one in America wants open borders. No one on the left is radically and militantly demanding we just let anybody in willy-nilly. Nobody. But the fear-mongering machine of the extreme right has got the extreme right convinced that every left-leaning liberal is ready to tear down the wall brick by brick and personally escort uh, MS-13 gang members across the border. That isn't going to happen, folks. Conversely, on the other side, the left is fear-mongered into believing that everybody on the right is a gun-toting, inbred, redneck, racist, xenophobe that's ready and willing to shoot your face off before they can sit down and have an intelligent discussion about the needs of this country. You will note, my friends, that, like I said before, this isn't symbolic of how fucked up immigration is. This is symbolic of how they keep us oppressed. It's part of a pattern. It's one of many tools that they use against us this way. At the core of all ideology is us versus them self-righteous conditioning. In other words, we are the righteous ones Everybody else is the bad guy, us versus them. We must see others as our enemies. Don't believe me? Take a good, hard look around. Us versus them is everywhere. 
look at the never-ending fight between the rich and the poor, the patently obvious division between the right and the left wing, right? That these are two wings of the same political system. A bird cannot fly with one wing alone. And yet here we are, it's red versus blue. It's white versus black, criminals versus cops, Muslims versus Christians, Buddhists versus Rohingya, because it ain't something that happens just here in Trumptopia alone, my friends. It's colonialist, colonialists versus the natives, or the natives versus the colonialists, atheists versus believers, vegans versus meat eaters, lone wolves versus sheeple, democracy versus totalitarianism, terrorists versus freedom fighters, gun control advocates versus gun rights advocates, flat earthers versus globus, Russians versus Americans, statists versus anarchists. It's ideology versus ideology, party versus party, you versus me, me versus you. What the system wants is everybody versus everybody. And it's working, folks. But, thank God, some of us are paying attention. And this isn't me patting myself on the back. I've fallen for this conditioning. Do you know why I do this podcast? Because I have spent half my life realizing that this conditioning exists and struggling to overcome it in my own mind. I've spent the other half my life witnessing well-intentioned people live in complete and total blindness of this conditioning. We have been living in a system of oppression since before World War II, since before the Industrial Revolution, arguably since the Tower of Babel itself. We have been living under a system of mental slavery that keeps us separate from the divine unity, which is our birthright and our origin and our root source, and instead locks us into this endless modality of mindless conflict for the benefit of those that profiteer on conflict. And while, yes, the mainstream media is all kinds of fucked up, apparently, even they can still occasionally tell us the truth. Now, setting aside the argument about the mainstream media, and yes, I know all about the conspiracy theories, I know how only five super rich individuals own all the corporations, I know that. But let's remember that all the people working in those corporations, they are human beings too. They are, um, they are also our brothers and sisters. These people that we love to point our fingers at and call fake news and blame them and, and ridicule them and call them the enemy of the people, they are the people. They are the people as much as anybody else who lives in this country, are the people. And I include those who are bound up in the corruption. Our own politicians. They are not lizard people from other planets. Okay, well, I don't know conclusively. But it seems incredibly unlikely that that is the case. Trust me, I've read all about the conspiracy theory. I know all the details. And to my mind, while not impossible, it seems incredibly unlikely. Akram's razor, folks. The simplest explanation is often the closest thing to the truth. And the simplest explanation is actually an organic, natural, simple one that is based on the realities of how our universe actually works. And the realities of what our political ideologies actually do. Here is a reality about our political ideologies 
that cannot be debunked, I think. I humbly propose to you. I could be wrong, but I humbly propose to you that the following is true, and therefore will be difficult for anyone to, quote, debunk. Political ideology has never solved a problem, period. Civic organization may have solved problems. Community collaboration might have solved some problems, and those things might have sometimes gotten wrapped up in political ideology or portrayed as the result or the product of political ideology, but ultimately they are separate and individual actions. Political ideology is a mental construct created to limit your ability to perceive your own reality. Social and uh, community collaboration are actions. When we organize and get things done, we take action. We don't pontificate about which ideology is most righteous, because that doesn't build buildings. Action and organization achieves the goals that we really genuinely, truly need not only to survive, but to progress and develop and advance. That's where we need to clarify our understanding. If political ideology solves nothing, why are we wasting so much time fighting over which political ideology is the best of the best? If all political ideology have us versus them brainwashing inherently coded into it, hmm, maybe, just maybe, fighting about it is what they want and is intended to result in nothing more than the perpetuation of that fighting. As S.E. Coop quite aptly put it, today, or a couple days ago, on her show, which I hope more people watch, because, uh, like I'd like to remind everybody, the mainstream media is not this monolithic evil thing. Like all other human endeavors, it is riddled with human failures, and human corruption, and human, um, uh, what's the other word I'm looking for, uh, human ego and ego traps, but it is not a monolithic evilness. And there are many decent, well-intentioned, well-meaning human beings struggling to do their best, trapped inside a very sophisticated, very oppressive system of ideological conditioning. We will heal as a species. And once we achieve that, we will still need to organize. We will still need to communicate. We will still need to build and grow and develop. That is why, my friends, I always humbly bring the suggestion home that a bloody violent revolution out there in the external material world, that is not going to solve our problems. Arguably, that's what the system of oppression wants us to engage in. Why? Because it is the opposite of healing. It is the opposite of organizing to truly solve a problem. It is the opposite of profiteering on broken systems. Healing and transformative evolution, healing and collaborative uh, organization, healing and spiritual effort, healing and compassionate, compassionate, uh, what's the word? Humanitarian effort. That's what's going to solve the problems that we face today. We're never going to feed the hungry by fighting over which political party is the badassest. We're never going to house the homeless by arguing about whether or not greed is 
the supreme thing we should all be greedy about. We're never going to heal all those that we've injured if we keep blaming everyone else for the problems that we face. We're never, ever, ever going to give our children a bright and green and sustainable future if we are wasting all our effort with hate, with blame, with uh, perpetuating conflict, and with a mindless pursuit of more ideology instead of a thoughtful and well-organized uh, execution of meaningful effort. The system that we live under does not care if we vote or don't vote. The system that we live under does not care if you are a Republican or a Democrat or a Libertarian or some other party. The system only cares that you keep fighting. The system only cares that you keep buying into whichever ideological echo chamber you find yourself in. The system only wants to perpetuate our isolation and separation from nature. Why? Because the system profits on us vis-a-vis -vis these broken political machines. That's today's episode of News Breaking News. People in the corrupt news media bringing you a little slice of the truth. Uh, maybe unawares or maybe in spite of the oppression. Who knows? But uh, I am always trying to capture and bring these kinds of moments to you. If you've seen a bit of news breaking the news and you have the opportunity to uh, audio record it and leave your thoughts, send it in. I will check them out and then uh, edit and organize them for inclusion in future episodes. We, my friends, must not destroy the news media just like we must not destroy the political system that we find ourselves in. If we choose to destroy or to attempt to destroy the system of oppression, the system of oppression has already won. Remember, friends, they want you to give up hope on healing. They want you to believe that violence is the only option left. They want you to reject your natural God-given connection to the divine energies that we call gods and goddesses in the universe. They want you to believe that in this world there is only suffering or the pursuit of wealth. They want you to believe that an ideology will fix the system, that the ideology perpetuates. Don't fall for it, friends. Remember, ego is a wily son of a bitch. And uh, he's doing his job. He, of course, is an arbitrary gender assignment. It doesn't have gender. It is ego. But it is doing its job really well. Why? Because we let ego do that job. As the news gets crazier, which it will, folks, it's going to just get weirder and weirder and weirder until we hit a breaking point, until the pendulum reaches its maximum swing and has to move back in the opposite direction. Now, that will not be the great relief. That will not be the, the winning of the revolution. That will be the system self-correcting so that it doesn't collapse.
so that it gives us a bit of a reprieve as it returns towards the center in order to then push out in the opposite extreme a little harder uh, with its new momentum. Extremism is not a fluke. Extremism is one of the tools of the system. I think that if there's anything we can focus on in the coming weeks and months, it is this understanding, this acknowledging, and this sharing of the awareness that the system profiteers on the conflict it creates. And that that is part and parcel of the programming they spew at us. And that that is inherent, regardless of political party, in all the ideology. If we can not only wake ourselves up as individuals to that, but help wake each other up as communities, then slowly but surely, the momentum will grow, not for a revolution where we guillotine the bad guys and lift up some other folks to just become the bad guys in their place, but the inner revolution. The momentum will grow for the spiritual revolution. The momentum will grow for the already ongoing, for it is nothing new, it is as old as the system of oppression, folks. The divine light is as ancient as the obscure darkness that hides the light from us. They are, in fact, mutually arising. So in our material world, yes, 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 there's all these horrible conspiracies. There's all these horrible agendas. Of course there are. And while some of them are exaggerations, and some of them are decoys, and some of them are flat-out lies in order to keep everyone confused, there is, in general, a, a consensus that there are people on this planet that would rather profiteer and thus perpetuate greed and profiteering. Like I posted, oh, I don't know, three, four years ago, you do not need a conspiracy theory more complicated than greed. And you do not need a solution more complicated than healing. The bad guys know that. They've known that for a very long time. That's why the system of oppression specifically, overtly, targets and ridicules and marginalizes anyone and everyone who speaks about our inner spiritual truth. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for the propaganda. Don't fall for the ego trap of self-doubt, self-loathing, and self-hatred, self-isolation, self-separation from divinity. Those are all ego traps. Don't fall for them, folks. Liberate yourself. Liberate your mind. Liberate your heart. I'm not telling you to blindly accept and believe in anything I've ever said. I'm inviting you to look inside and free yourself from everything anyone else has ever programmed into you. It's hard work. It's tougher than quitting cigarettes. It's more painful than breaking up with your favorite life partner. It's a pain in the ass. But at the core of the evolutionary transition that we are living through is this transformation, is this transformative healing, is this esoteric spiritual adventure of self-liberation from the inside out. Freedom has nothing to do with how many guns you have. Freedom has nothing to do with how many bad guys you think you're going to kill or how many bad guys you already have killed. Killing people brings you nothing more than the weight of their death on your soul. And that, my friend, is 
not freedom. Freedom begins deep within. Freedom is the absence of pre-programmed, self-limiting, political, social, and religious ideology. Freedom is the self-liberation from every kind of ideology so that you, as a human being, can directly experience and communicate with your mother and father, nature, divinity. They are there, deep within the insideness, deep within, behind, and before your personality, before all your belief systems, before all the sentences you learn to regurgitate, before you were taught, quote, how the world works, God was busy moving in you, being your spirit, manifesting your body avatar. That which we call God does not give two shits about political party. That which we call God does not endorse any organized religion. That's a whole huge, bold statement which we could spend several hours probing. And I'm going to leave it at that. Remember, the news is just another tool set. We must neither accept it blindly, nor should we throw it out without investigation. I mean, sure, we could burn the whole system down to the ground, but what would we do with the ensuing chaos? And also, everyone's going to hate it because we're going to get rid of the internet and memes? No, 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 my friends. But I digress. I've let this episode of News Breaking News spiral way out of control. But remember, folks, both parties profit from the brokenness that they create. Both parties profit from the quote-unquote imaginary fight that they are fighting on behalf of their constituents. Both parties want the system to appear as broken as it appears. Why? Because the system's not broke, my friends. The system works exactly as designed. And the only way to really fix it, to really change that, to really free ourselves from this oppression, is not to fight the people who are acting out ego's agenda. Because if we kill them, ego just infects us. The only way to win this spiritual game is to heal our ego. Ego is a distributed malware. It resides on every avatar. It's part of the entire network. So when we say so-and-so is so corrupt that their ego is taken over, it doesn't mean that they are alone in some terrible malady. It means that the distributed malware is hijacking that avatar, but it's still acting through all of us. To solve that problem, to fix that issue, to repair that dysfunction, we must stop fighting inside the system's rules. We must stop playing within our oppressor's boundaries. We must transcend those limitations and achieve that which nature has been begging us to get on top of for centuries. 
our evolutionary transcendent development, our spiritual work to guide the species to a new evolutionary breakthrough. That's our real job. We're neglecting it in favor of all this political, ideological infighting. Let's turn that around, folks. And I know it's overwhelming sounding, but that's why I come back to you episode after episode with this humble and perpetual reminder. It starts inside. The revolution is deep within your being. It's intimidating, I know, but it's waiting for you. Stop neglecting it. Stop distracting yourself. Stop allowing this political ideology to drive the human species towards extinction. Let's stop playing by their rules. Let's start healing and transforming and transcending by doing the spiritual work that is beyond the scope of the system's limitations. As always, I hope you found this ridiculous, rambling, absent-minded, crazy uh, chit-chat of mine interesting and somewhat informative, and hopefully it drives your curiosity inward to look deep behind all that which we've been conditioned with. As always, my dear friends and listeners, I wish you the best. May peace, love, and grooviness blossom in your heart. Thanks for listening. Tune in for more episodes of the Almost Daily Zencast, News Breaking News, Good Morning Trumptopia, unauthorized and explicit readings, and late night thoughts, which will be dropping soon. And that is the latest news breaking news. We now return you to your regularly scheduled brainwashing. Thank you for listening. 